Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Unify Switch Flex. I wanna thank Ubiquity for sending this out to me, but they did not pay for this video and all the views are my own. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront. I'll put the link in the description below. So let's first take a look at this switch and then we'll go over some of the specs. Here's the Unify Switch Flex and on the front we could see it's labeled port 1 to 5. Port 1 is our PoE in and then port 2 to 5 are our PoE out. We have a status indicator which will be yellow if there's PoE on and then we have a link indicator which would be 10, 100 or 1000 megabits per second. On the bottom right here, we could see the weatherproof housing and we could take this weatherproof housing off. The weatherproof housing could also be taken apart. And then we would put in our ethernet cables through it. On the bottom, we have our five one gigabit interfaces. On the back, we have our mounting bracket, which has a magnet in it. If we take the mounting bracket off, we could see that we have our reset button. I love this switch and the reason why it makes running security cameras much easier. I typically bring these into residential areas into the garage and then I'll spread out my cameras from there. It makes the cabling a lot easier and if you've ever done residential home cabling when the house is finished, you would know what I mean. Now let's go through some of the specs of the switch. It's a five port managed PoE switch. Our input port supports 802.3 AT or BT and our output ports support 802.3 AF PoE. If we're just using the 802.3 AT uplink or the PoE uplink, we could only use a maximum wattage of 15 watts. If we're using PoE++, we could use 46 watts. So let's take a look at how I'm gonna have this all cabled together. In my network room, we have my UDM Pro, which is connecting to my ISPs, and that is connecting to my USW aggregation switch. From there, it's connecting to my Unify Enterprise 24 PoE. The USW Flex is going to be connecting to the USW Enterprise PoE, and this doesn't support PoE++, so we're only going to be able to use 15 watts out of this switch. I have four cameras that will be running to this switch. It will be a G4 Pro, a Unify G3 Flex, a Unify G4 Bullet, and then we have the G4 Dome. So I'm going to bring the switch down to my garage, plug in all the connections to the cameras, and then we'll get it adopted into our controller. Now I have my USW Flex connected to my Unify Enterprise 24 PoE switch, and we can see it's ready to be adopted. So we'll click on the USW Flex and we'll press adopt. Now the USW Flex is adopted into our Unify controller. Let's take a look at some of the settings. So under the overview, we have our MAC address, we have our model, and we have our firmware version that this switch is currently running. Below that, we have our IP address, and then we have our PoE power consumption. Right now we can see we're using 11.54 watts out of 20 watts available. Our power source voltage is 51.87 volts. The USW Flex doesn't have a temperature sensor in it, but I think it would be a nice feature as I place these in attics and in garages to connect security cameras to. We could see the uptime, the memory usage, and the load average. Under uplinks, it's gonna show us the switch we're connecting to. We're connecting to my Unify Enterprise switch, and the speed is 1000 and it's full duplex. Our downlinks, we don't have any, so it won't show any of that information. If we take a look at our clients, it's going to show us what's connected and we have three cameras that are connected to this switch right now. Under ports, it will show us our port status and it will show us the speeds that the ports are going in. Port 2 and 3 are 1 gigabit and then port 4 is 10 by 100. One thing we need to do, these are all in the default profile of all. We need to switch that over to our camera VLAN. And how we do that, we could select all three ports and then edit selected. Under here, the switch port profile, we're gonna switch that and put it onto my Mac Telecom camera network and press apply. If we take a look under the config wheel, we could give this switch an alias, I'll call it camera switch. We could either use the site settings or we could turn on and off the LED. Under services, we could specify the management LAN, we could enable jumble frames or flow control. We could also set SNMP if we want. Under network, we could configure it using DHCP or a static IP address. And then under manage device, it's all the same thing. We could forget it from our controller if we need to. Under tools, we could open a debug terminal and then under statistics, we could see our CPU and memory utilization. 
So now the switch is done provisioning and if we scroll over top of each of those ports we should see it in the camera profile which they are. Now if we look at my UMVR these cameras should be up and we can see all my cameras are currently up. Not all of these cameras are on that switch but I know that the G4 Pro and the G4 Bullet are and they're working perfectly fine. So final thoughts on the switch, I think it's an awesome switch, especially if you're running security cameras. It will make your cabling easier as it will be shorter runs to the soffit or wherever you're mounting the cameras. Also, the switch comes in at a great price point at $99 USD. You can't really beat that price point for a managed switch that provides PoE. If you guys have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.